our presenters today are obviously myself, uh, Jennifer Griffith, the Executive Director of Food Processing Skills Canada. Um, you know, we're here located in Ottawa, the nation's capital here. Um, we have a staff of about 25 or so um, individuals uh, managing all the various projects that we may have. Um, I've been with the organization over 20 plus years um, and really just enjoy working with uh, the food processing industry, um, ag industry. Um, it's always exciting, always something new every day going on. And uh, we're just really pleased to be able to offer um, our industry and stakeholders uh, with various programming and funding that we have available. So the program manager for this project is Jennifer Brown and I'll allow her to introduce herself. Thanks, Jen. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Brown. I have been with FPSC for approximately three years now. Some of you may know me from the on-farm, post-farm program and I did look at the registrants. So nice to see you all here and uh, nice to virtually meet everybody else. Uh, we have a information packed webinar for you today. So we're excited to, to get started. Great, thanks Jen. So thank you everybody for participating. We have a huge number of registrants uh, for the program. Um, so we have a lot of companies, a lot of institutions, schools um, on board here, um, community groups, um, employment centers and so forth, uh, really taking part in today. So thank you so much for being a part of that. So as we begin, I would like to know maybe hear from you in our first poll today. Just wanting to know uh, which province or territory you're joining us from today. Take a few seconds, answer the poll, and we'll have Mike uh, read us the results. All right, so we've got about 83% submitted, so let's see where everyone is. It looks like we have a critical mass from Ontario, around 44%. Uh, the next biggest centers, uh, BC with uh, 16% and uh, Newfoundland with 13. Otherwise, it's a little more dispersed as we go through the provinces. Nice. Good stuff. We like to see that representation across the country. Okay. All right. So our agenda today, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about FPSC, about the industry, what the SWIP program is, um, some of the benefits of the program, the program eligibility, that is going to be the key area and how to apply um, and knowing what to do, um, how long the process takes, um, the different types of terms that are available, uh, the types of students that you can hire and so forth. Um, then we'll also get into what the plus means um, in terms of the program. Um, and then we're gonna take questions throughout along the way. And then we'll also let you know about some of our other programs that we have today. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention a big thank you to Employment uh, Services Development, Social Development Canada, ESDC, who is uh, the funder of this program, uh, providing the resources uh, to be able to provide the funds um, to all of our stakeholders um, within our sector and related uh, sectors. So we want to give um, a big thank you to uh, our funders at ESDC. So our SWIP team, we got a great team here um, at FPSC, who is also along on the call with us today. So we have our project specialist, Tiffany Galvez. She's one of our newer team members, but has some great experience in the school uh, realm or the post-secondary educational realm and uh, is very knowledgeable about the program. Any questions you may need or be answered, uh, she's definitely your lady and can help you along there and to get your applications processed as soon as possible. Possible. So thank you, Tiffany, for being on today. And then we have Cynthia, Cynthia Perry. I always go by the old name, but it's the new name. Cynthia Perry has been with our organization for many years. I've known Cynthia for over 20 years um, of, out of the East Coast. She's also our Atlantic Regional Representative, um, has worked with us numerous years, knows the industry um, like the back of her hand. And she is our outreach manager across the country uh, for this program as well. So any other information, connections, working very closely with the post-secondary institutions um, and the companies uh, to help uh, get your applications processed and to get you on board as part of the process. So, Cindy, good to have you as well. 
All right, so a bit about FPFC. Um, our main goal is workforce development and to help um, food and beverage manufacturers and related industries in skills development. Our goal is to professionalize uh, the food and beverage industry, um, whether we're developing standards, um, whether we're providing funding to different organizations, uh, whether we're helping with HR tools, developing curriculum, anything around that umbrella of skills development is what we want. We want to have the best skilled workforce in the world. That's our goal. And uh, we think definitely that we are leaders in that area and um, really getting us to the place where we need to be to have the best attraction and recruitment and retention of the employees that we have. Um, this is kind of our Internal goal here was professionalizing the food and beverage industry. Everything we do is based off of research and labor market information. Um, we set competencies, we set those standards um, that we need to set that benchmark um, amongst the competencies that we need and skills, development, knowledge, tasks, and skills required for the various occupations. Um, then we want to train uh, these individuals, onboarding, upskilling, you name it, food safety, could be emotional intelligence any of those realms or areas of topics. Um, we have that. Um, we want to accredit and certify um, our programs and certify the individuals um, who are also within the industry because every skill that they learn should be recognized um, regardless of their education or with the education that you do have and their knowledge. We want to be able to recognize those individuals. So everything we do fits within uh, this realm. Labor market information, obviously it's very important to understand the needs of our industry and our sector. We are the largest manufacturing sector in Canada. Um, if those didn't know that we are, um, we have about one out of five employees who work within um, food manufacturing in Canada. Uh, we have 280,000 workers. Um, and the 100,000 more in related areas. We have over 7,600 businesses across the country. Um, you'll see the average um, hourly earnings between 20, depending on the parts of the country that you're in, uh, 20 to 32 uh, dollars an hour. Um, we have about nine, we represent 19% of all manufacturing jobs. We have a shortage, we know that, um, you'll see coming up what that number actually is. It's pretty glaring uh, by 2025, uh, how many people we do need. Most of our businesses are small, under 100 um, employees. We have the largest representation of immigrant workers out of any sector in Canada. We're at 31% um, versus 23% for the rest of the country. We have many educational programs as well, um, where we have many of our post-secondary uh, folks on the line today. Uh, we have a lot of them across the country, about 160 different institutions offer various types of food um, programming. And one stat is pretty glaring. We only have one in four Canadians said that they're familiar with our industry and our sector. So it's, you know, people just see the food that they have and that they're eating or they don't understand or know where it's actually coming from or where it's being produced and manufactured. So we have work to do there in terms of perception and awareness. And food safety is obviously a very important topic um, for um, employers, um, but labor is the biggest um, pain point, I would say right now uh, within most of our uh, processors. And, to the point, maybe we can have um, we can get some students to help uh, with some of those uh, challenges. So benefits of hiring co-op students, there are many benefits. You get some great new perspectives, maybe some new ideas. Um, we can provide that opportunity to foster the next generation you know, of employees. And I think just creating that awareness of that our industry exists and there are so many types of jobs and occupations that they can actually um, work in our industry that they didn't even know about, um, I think is, uh, is a key point uh, to them. And then being able to keep these individuals permanently afterwards, um, I think would be great, keep that continuity um, within your businesses. So four out of five employers surveyed say that co-op and internship students are a source of new talent and potential future employees. So we know that there's a great benefit to um, having students on board. 
So the student work placement program um, where you're going to be able to access, we want to provide you with up to $7,500 um, in wage subsidies um, to be able to bring a student uh, on board to your business. Um, you know, there's so many needs. Um, I think that we have right now um, in the climate that we're in, everybody's looking for individuals, everyone's looking for workers everywhere is hiring um, and any assistance that we can provide to you. Um, that's what we want to do to be able to help um, the industry during these times. So let's go to our second poll quickly and find out which industry sector are you representing today. Wow, let's see. Getting some good results here. How are we doing there, Mike? Uh, so we've got a critical mass. It looks like we've got 80%. So, so far in the lead, we have food and beverage manufacturing with uh, 59%. Cannabis with 1%, but they're still here. Uh, food related association with nine. Uh, consultant with three. Retail grocer, food specialty with four. And college or university with 24. Awesome. Let's go. Thank you. All right. So what we wanted to say, so right now this funding can apply to food manufacturers, but also many other related um, sectors. So any of the 11 subsectors um, within food and beverage manufacturing, so dairy, um, bakery, could be um, sugar, confectionery, fruit and veg, you name it, we cover, you're covered under this program. Uh, cannabis producers who are making edibles. That's one of our newest subsectors. They're the 11th subsector um, that we have. It used to be 10. Um, you also qualify for the program. Uh, Food-related associations, any of our provincial associations, um, ag associations, um, you have members who deal with food. We can also support you as well. Colleges and universities, you are actually considered to be an employer. So if you have any of your own students that you wanna hire who have a co-op or internship component um, to their uh, program, you can also hire them um, on site as uh, part of the college and university. So you're an employer. Uh, retail grocery stores, you also count um, as one of our related food sectors. Consultants, um, you're working in the food industry, maybe your equipment supplier and so forth within the food industry, um, we can also support you. So there's a wide um, depth and breadth, I think, of organizations um, that can be a part of the program. And if you are not in one of these sectors, there are other um, programs, other sector programs that could um, support you. So I know a big question has been around culinary and do we support restaurants and culinary? We have the tourism uh, council that takes care of the restaurant portion culinary side. So um, if you take a look around, you'll see <laughs> other groups that can um, support those different areas. All right, we'll get into some of the program eligibility. Um, so obviously basic ones, be a registered Canadian business or not profit organization located anywhere in Canada. So this is a national program. Um, I know sometimes you hear Quebec and they're saying, oh, are we eligible because we're Quebec because they have a lot of their own provincial type of um, programming for them, but it is a national initiative. Um, you can provide full or part-time work um, opportunities. So it's a minimum of 10 hours per week uh, for a minimum of four weeks <laughs> up to a maximum of 16 weeks. Um, so that's the length of period of time. So you can have part-time employees, maybe they're on the night shifts or the evening shifts and so forth. They would um, qualify. Maybe they work on the weekends and so forth, as long as they have a minimum of 10 hours um, per week. Uh, we need to provide proof of student 
placement employment. So your start date, your full wage information, and you'll see how that works when we get to the application process. Um, a big one here, students must be eligible to work in Canada and be a part of a co-op or internship program. So they need to be part of a workplace integrated program that has to be hands down, but eligible to work in Canada. So that means if they are an international student, they can still qualify as long as they're eligible to work in Canada. So your international students can qualify as well. Just make sure they're eligible to work here in Canada. There are no limits on the number of placements allowed per company. So we've had other groups say, uh, for instance, like uh, aviation organization, they had 300 uh, Air Canada employees on their program at one time. Um, so there's no limit. We have some groups that have 10 applications in uh, for 10 students that they have and so forth. So you don't have any limits um, placed on the number um, for your company. And uh, students can be rehired for multiple semesters with new funding each time. So let's say you had a summer student, um, you had them for three months and then you, they want to, they have another work term available as part of their um, curriculum or their program at school for the fall semester. They could also, you could rehire them again and get new funding, another $7,500 for the next term. So we want you to understand that they can be rehired and that could be year over year as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so students can be recruited from any discipline. So maybe you have, um, you want to set up a new website. Um, you can hire from the IT department. Um, you can hire a student from the accounting department, engineering department, any, need that you have at your company or facility, they, it can be any discipline whatsoever. So don't think you're, we're stuck to the food science department um, or the sciences. Yes, we wanna promote some STEM you know, areas and so forth, but it can be from any area um, uh, within field of study. Um, as an organization as well, you can stack your funding. Um, so if you are in a province and they have their own provincial uh, similar program um, that provides you with some funding, we can provide you with up to 75% and you could get the other 25% from your provincial um, organization or provincial government as long as it does not go over the 100%. So you can um, stack the funds that you receive as long as it doesn't go over the required 100%. And then we do have three terms that are currently available. So summer term, if you had somebody that you hired in the summer who meets these requirements, you can still apply today and we can retroactively pay you back for those summer students or those summer individuals. If you have somebody that you hired right now for the fall term and it's coming up, it's ending in December, you can still apply for that fall placement. So if they start in September, they're ending December, still apply for that um, individual. We have winter term uh, coming up. So if you know you're gonna hire somebody starting for, you need somebody for January, uh, apply and get your application going um, for the winter term. And then we're, we'll see, we're crossing our fingers. We believe this program will be extended for another two years. And then we'll have the spring and summer terms hopefully available um, continuing uh, forward. And right now there is still, there are a lot of funds still available. We're not maxed out as it stands right now. So it's first come first serve in terms of the applications. Um, but right now we still have quite a bit of availability in terms of funds available uh, to provide to you. Jen, do you want to get into some of the other program uh, eligibility requirements here? Absolutely. Thanks, Jen. So uh, with uh, any business, there are certain regulations and, and insurances that any business must uh, keep, keep in good standing. So that is uh, in compliance with all of the federal and provincial and territorial human rights, labor legislation, regulations, and other standards. They must be in good standing 
as long as, uh, and as well as the WSIB, which is uh, here in Ontario. I know some provinces have different workplace safety and insurance. Um, so if, uh, BC, I believe it's BC workplace safety. So that must be in good standing as well. And also if you have applied for another federal funded program for your students, unfortunately we are not able to accept you. The only other funding you can stack with us is a provincial funding program for students as Jen had mentioned in the earlier slide. Uh, employers that are not eligible, um, your, your students must be enrolled in a co-op or work integrated learning program. It must be part of their field of study and in that term that you have submitted the application for. Uh, we cannot accept an application if you've hired a student to run the front cash and they don't have a co-op component of their of their field of study if it's not helping them learn or gain experience then it's not considered eligible um, <clears throat> the only other companies or organizations that are, are not eligible for the program is a federal provincial territorial munis municipal governments any organizations that are extension thereof um, for any other level of government and crown corporations. Perfect. A lot of people wonder what a work integrated learning uh, component is. And essentially it's curricular. It's a form of curricular experiential education and it formally integrates the student's field of study. So what does that mean? It means if an engineering student gets hired by your company, they must be working in an area that is going to further their education and give them real life experience. They get to add that onto their resume and hopefully it works out well enough that they get hired on with you full time after graduation. Perfect, thank you. All right, let's go to our third poll. Have you ever hired a student? How many of you have contributed to that? Oh, is our poll launched, Mike? Uh, we have launched it. Oh, I can see it on my screen. I don't see anybody voting. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, I'm not sure if it's working. Mm. Yeah, it's not working. There was a yeah. the button. Okay, no worries. Thank you. I'm sure lots of you have. All right, so we're going to get into the apply section. Um, very sorry how to apply for the program. I know there's some questions in the chat there. I see that going around. We'll have some opportunities to answer those questions uh, for you, but uh, the process is pretty straightforward. Um, so we're going to go through that now. Um, you just mainly go to our main website and you're going to see the employer login or you're going to see register, sign up now, and um, we'll go through some of that. All right, Jen, over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, first of all, we will look at the website. You can reach us at swpp-fpsc.com. This will bring you to our website and onto our homepage. The easiest way, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a tickle. The easiest way to get in and register is to click on the employer login at the top right of the corner, at the top right corner of the screen. And then you'll see on the second uh, graphic there, it will bring you into a new screen. And if you have not already registered, you will want to click on the bottom at create an account. As soon as you click there, 
it's going to bring you to the next screen. And this is where you get to choose what type of organization you are or if you are a job seeker. So you can see there the choices are employer, job seeker, or recruiting agency. So you would click which it suits you best. And then as soon as you do that, we can go to the next slide. It will bring you uh, to create an account. So there, this is pretty straightforward. You complete your organization name, your contact name, um, your email. You'll uh, be asked to confirm your email and also to create a, a password standard for any other type of form uh, that you find on the internet. So as soon as you click create an account, it will ask you to verify your email. And then when you enter the platform, this is what you will see. You will see the welcome screen and you will see a graphic at the top that says student work placement program, SWIP. If you simply click on the apply now button, um, that will take you into um, the application funding wizard. But if you are wanting to post a job, if you've already created your profile and you're wanting to post a job, you will come back and you will come onto the main screen right there. And then you will click on um, post a job for work integrated learning job postings. And there's a number of categories there. There's four categories there that you can choose from. And it, it will be the exact same process as the funding wizard that we'll see in the next slide. You simply fill out the information and click submit. And then what it does is it will go out to any post-secondary institution that you have targeted. So this whole platform is called Campus Connect. This is all called Campus Connect, that's correct. Perfect. So we're gonna show you the employer application uh, component next. Yes, this is the funding wizard. This is what you will see after you click on the apply now button. So this brings you into the, into the, the funding wizard essentially. And you can see up on the left side of your screen, there's a number of steps that you need to go through. Don't worry, it doesn't take long. It's just a simple, they're just forms that you need to fill out that gives us the information we need in order to process your application. And then once you decide or you know which term you want to apply for, you will click the term and then simply click next. So like we mentioned, you have the three terms that are available to you. Uh, yes, right currently. Now. And this application process should take them about how long, Jen? Uh, it should take approximately 10 minutes. It depends, it depends on if you have all of your information gathered. With all of your information at hand, it shouldn't take any more than 10 minutes. Perfect. So while you're working through the funding wizard, um, you will only, if you have multiple students that you want to apply for funding, you will only need to fill in the organization information once. So the system will remember your organization and will allow you to create multiple applications for your students. So the only information that you're going to need to put in after you create your essential application is the new student information. So here you can see that we've filled out test information. Um, please pay attention to the asterisks. That means it, it is a mandatory field that we need to fill out. Some of the questions are not mandatory, but it's nice to have simply because we will end up coming back to you and asking you for it eventually. So please complete every question uh, as it is there. And once you complete it, you will go on and click next. So this is the placement uh, portion of the application, and this is going to be where you enter the, the employment opportunity that you're offering to, the, to a student. So it's going to ask you a will type, which means what type of work integrated learning is it? Is it co-op? Is it... Uh, <clears throat> Internship? Is, 
sorry, yeah, I just had a tickle. Is it an internship? Is it co-op? Uh, things like that. So you'll select the correct, the correct uh, employment term, the job title, the job description. Um, please note there is a maximum of 16 weeks that we can fund. You could put in 24 weeks. Some we have some applications for students that are working from September right until um, June. However, we're only allowed the maximum of 16 weeks. So, um, and then, so you know- that if they couldn't, they could do <laughs> the 16 weeks and then reapply technically they could. for the next term <clears throat> if they have a work integrated learning component, right? Good question, good question. Yes, absolutely. If they will be with you for all three terms, fall, winter, and summer or spring, um, they can absolutely um, qualify for funding. You will have to reapply for each semester. Perfect. Okay. And then this gets into the student information portion. Um, you will notice that gender is required. Um, there is an option that you can prefer not to say. Uh, we, we just like to have statistics. Um, and the program essentially was designed to help underrepresented groups, which is why there is a questionnaire there for first year students, indigenous, newcomers to Canada, uh, women in STEM, visible minorities. You do have the option to, to you know, not answer any of those questions. Um, we would like to know if uh, they're enrolled full time, if they're part time, we need to know what type of program they are enrolled in and the university and we will also need the institution contact names. And that's just simply if we need to go back and verify when we complete our due diligence. So this is the last screen that you get. And of course it's the review screen. So you can go through and review uh, your answers and you have the opportunity to go back and correct anything that might not be what you initially wanted to enter. You will simply click finish and boom, you're done. Now, um, one of the things that will happen once you click finish is our team is going to follow up with you either via email or a telephone call and give you the next step. So typically what the next steps would be, we would send you a terms and conditions to uh, complete and we will request certain documents from your student. Sorry, you weren't done there. And I went ahead. That's okay. Back okay. to you. <laughs> She's rushing me. No, no, not at all. And the application process, like once for us to process your application, really depends on you and how quick um, you can get the forms that are required and submit it in. Like we could literally process an application in one day if we had all of the required documents, which you will see um, coming up in terms of documents that are needed. The toughest part seems to be to get the <coughs> student documents that are required. So the system, and also check your junk mail, because sometimes those automatic emails will go into your junk folders or spam folders that come from us or come from the Campus Connect um, system. So just make yes. sure you're checking those um, folders as well when you complete the application. I'd like to jump in there, Jen. Mm -hmm. So when we when we do communicate with employers who've submitted an application from the platform, it's not our FPSC emails. You will see FPSC at outcomecampusconnect.com. Uh, and a lot of the times um, the automatic spam filters send it to spam. So we have noticed that it's something to keep an eye out for. And it's something to, to let your students know to keep an eye out for as well, because the email does go to their university email address. Perfect, good stuff to know. So here's an example of a simple uh, wage subsidy calculation. 
um, that you will have to provide at the end of the term. So we will reimburse you for the entire amount that you qualify for at the end of that student term or student placement. So we have a simple four week placement. Um, they're working full time, 40 hours per week at $18 per hour. Um, that would be $28.80 um, for that four weeks placement. And we can provide you with 75% of that cost. So we would send you a check for $2,016. Um, so you would provide us with a full invoice. You're gonna see the statements that are required as well, um, but they do have to be on your payroll and you do have to be paying you know, the usual EI, CPP and so forth. So they do need to be um, on payroll. And here are some of the documents that are required. Uh, from both the employer and the students. So first up, it's easy for the employers. You're gonna have a terms and conditions contract um, that you will need to sign and get back to us. Um, that's the easy part. Then we have to get the agreements back from the students. So there's a signed student agreement. You need the student's proof of enrollment um, for that work term. We also need proof of um, co-op registration or that program is part of a workplace integrated learning um, program as part of their field of study. Uh, we also need a copy of um, the student's legal status. So even if they are an international student or permanent resident or Canadian citizen, that's what we would require. And then we would need some sort of provincial student provincial ID. Um, if that's a driver's license, a health card, so forth, whatever it is that they are um, legally entitled to work in the province that you're in. So this is where sometimes the process gets held up is because the students aren't getting back their information. So we need the employers, you have to push and follow up with your students to get that information back as soon as possible to complete your entire application. Because that's what we'll consider your application fully complete when we have all of these documents back in our hands. Yes, I want to interject there. Please, yes. please understand that uh, if we, <clears throat> if your student is non-responsive and it is something that we do chase a lot of, but if your student is unresponsive, we will simply be sending you an email just advising you of the status of your application if we don't hear back from them. Um, in that, and in that, in that instance, we will be asking you to follow up with your student to ensure that they get those documents to us. Yes, perfect. So up front, once you're hiring them, I know you're collecting most of this information. Um, anyhow, like to put into your payroll system and so forth, if we can make them aware at the same time, this is what they need, that would be great. So then the reimbursement documents required on the employer side. Um, so you'll provide us with an invoice with the amount um, that's for reimbursement based on the calculation. Um, that we just saw. Um, you can put that on your company letterhead, provide your um, GST number and all that good stuff. Um, and you have to provide um, the pay stubs um, of the students um, with proof of their gross pay there that you would supply back to us. Pretty simple. All right, now let's get into some questions here. See, there's probably a lot in the chat. And if you want to actually ask a question, you can put your hand up, um, put your camera on and ask the question live as well. So if you like, I can start at the top from uh, the first questions we, we received at the uh, start of the webinar. Uh, we have somebody who asked, do we have to apply before the co-op placement takes place or can the application be applied after the co-op has already been done? Yes, the you can apply after the co-op's been done in this case for a summer and fall placement, um, but then you can also apply beforehand, but for only the term that's available. So for right now it would be for the winter term that's available, but you can apply for past terms as it stands right now. Yes, right, so. if they've already hired the student. Okay, so the next question is the Propel Tourism Program requires Canadian citizenship or PR status. This program differs, which is great, 
but I'm wondering why international students are being included in this, but not the tourism programs. Mm -hmm. Just go back to the tourism group <laughs> and just, it's a fine line, right? So yes. they just have to be eligible to work in Canada. So as long as they're eligible to work in Canada, it doesn't matter if they're international students or not. It just so happens that there might, there's a lot of international students who will come and go to school, but they won't apply for their work visa. So you have a lot of the university programs who do um, encourage their international students to get their work visa so they can also participate in the co-op or internship placements. So um, yeah, just go back to them and let them know that. Thanks, that answers another question. Somebody was uh, interested in knowing if this uh, eligible, eligibility recently changed because traditionally international students were not eligible for the stream of funding. Yes. So it answers that. Um, another participant is thinking of hiring a student for summer 2022, i.e. E. May to August. Is it too early uh, for them to start thinking about applying for funding now? And will there be funding for summer 2022 placements as well? Yes, it's too early for summer. We're hoping that um, the program will be extended for another two years and we'll know that very soon. Um, so you'll hear something in um, a good enough amount of time before the uh, summer placements uh, would be open or spring and summer placements would be open. So keep, uh, keep your ears and eyes open for that announcement. Awesome. So uh, the next one is, can you have multiple individuals from an organization set up an account or application, or does it have to go through a central person for each company? Mm, interesting. Are they at different locations? Um, maybe that would be what I would ask. So, you know, I know a lot of facilities might have multiple locations across the country, but Jen, <laughs> have we had any um, applications like that who may be at different facilities? They can go to different facilities. Um, the application can come in and be just under um, one organization. Excuse me, I have no idea why I'm losing my voice. Um, and there is a portion of the application that if the student is not working on site or is working remotely, you can enter the information there. Okay. So, so it does work. They can work at different locations um under one company but the company the company contact will stay the same okay but could they have multiple mm -hmm. contacts like say there's a plant in ontario and there's a location in bc that they have two different you know hr managers so forth could they apply separately i don't see why not or i don't see why not no uh, we haven't come across that because typically um the talent the talent acquisition directors uh, usually take care of all of the co-op uh, co students um, under one umbrella, whether they're on location or in a different location. Mm. Uh, but I don't see any reason why they couldn't. It, right. Just apply and we can figure that out. Um, a lot yes. Of yeah, we could. We, we should be able to combine them if we, if we need to. <clears throat> So uh, the next one is co-op work permits for international students can take a long time to be approved by IRCC, up to 105 days sometimes. Are these students still eligible for employers to hire with the implied status for their work permit? No, they have to actually have the yeah. work permit in hand. Yeah. That's the requirement. <laughs> okay, uh, we have another one. It seems more of a technical uh, issue, but there is no summer 21, 2021 term option on the platform. Uh, how do we perceive we want to apply retroactively? Uh, the, there is. Yeah, there is. The summer 2021 um, term is there to select. <laughs> Highlighted that actually. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. So summer 2021, fall 2021, and winter 2022. And just to point out too, um, summer, the summer 2021 term for FPSC goes starts at June 1st, not May 1st. The official term runs from May 1st to August 31st. However, um, FPSC, we are we can only rec, um, 
uh, retroactively go to June 1st. So just to keep that in mind when you are applying for subsidy. Right, because that's when our contract officially began was June 1st. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Um, is there an age, <clears throat> did they get rid of the age requirement of a student? Early there is. There's no age requirement now. Right? There's no age requirement. They just need to be a post-secondary student. We we cannot accept um, high school students. It has to be post-secondary. Perfect. Great to know. Um, okay, the uh, next one up is, uh, I'm thinking of applying for a past term. The student was funded by another federal program for the first eight weeks of her employment. Then we kept her on for a further eight weeks without any federal funding, just paying out of her own pockets. Could we apply for those eight weeks that we didn't have any federal funding? Hmm. If, was it a new term? If it's like, was it a, we'd have to yeah, ask a bit more questions, <laughs> I think there to know if it's like the same term, like the full 16 weeks, but it was another federal program. So yeah. uh, I'm gonna recommend that uh, uh, Sarah, who uh, asked the question, that you uh, reach out to our team directly and they'll be able to field that uh, a little better for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and the, uh, the last one is, uh, what about net new requirements? Will this impact hiring next year? Net uh, new is gone. Net yeah, net new, new is, is gone. <laughs> Thank well, God. For, for this year and because of the implications that COVID had on many, many companies last year, ESDC did get rid of the net new. We don't know and we haven't been informed if it's coming back next year. We'll have to wait and see on that. But for the current terms that we have available, summer, fall, and winter, there is no net new requirement. Great to know. Okay, well, that wraps up our uh, our questions so far that we've received. Oh, I see some more, or do we want to ask those? Is there any more questions? that? If PSI has hired a co-op student, are they eligible to apply for the SWIP as employers? PSI's, quote, yes, you are. Definitely, you're considered an employment of an employer in this instance as well. So post-secondary institutes hire co-op students. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And there's one. Can a student from an Ontario institution work for another location in a different province? Yep. If the main location of the company is located in Ontario and be eligible <laughs> for SWIFT. Most definitely. You're a Canadian company. We don't really, it doesn't really matter where the student um, works across the country as long as they're being paid um, in Canadian funds on the payroll um, from your Canadian location, that's fine. Um, I'm going to see here. There's um, we applied, <clears throat> we applied under yes, yes. Yeah. Are we still applicable to apply? Is yes a federal? It is. There's two forms of yes. That's the youth employment um, skills strategy, I believe. Um, so they're just depending on what it was. There's a provincial and there is a federal program as well. So we'd have to get some more details from you um, in terms of the stream that you've uh, been a part of. Yeah. And they wanted uh, to, maybe in the chat, can you list the outbound email address? Um, once again, for everybody, like where your confirmations will come from, which Tiffany may have done already. Yes, Tiffany did that. Um, and I see another question here. Is there a maximum number of hours a student can work per week? Well, typically, if it's a full time position, it will be 40 hours. Um, Over time will depend on your company's policy. However, just keep in mind that we, we do not pay more than 7500 uh, per subsidy. Right. Perfect. All right. So we're getting close to, uh, down to our time here. So we'll continue on with the uh, presentation. See how quick we can get through this. So the benefits, <laughs> what the plus means is that we're actually offering some skills development training. So the suite of online courses that can help prepare the student. And we're also providing some uh, supervisory level courses to the companies as well. 
for their supervisors. And that's all at no cost. And it's for those who are applying um, to the program. And that's valued at around $4,000 uh, per learner. And all of our curriculum is based off of our learning and recognition framework. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is actually um, a career pathway. This is what industry has indicated that um, anyone coming into their facilities or currently working in their facilities, these are the types of courses and content that they would like to receive um, for any individuals working with them. So starting off with the basic workplace essentials, then if you've been there a year or so, you go through your foundational level one course content, um, then you get into your supervisory level courses and management level courses. And they range from multiple topics. Um, this is kind of our, our roadmap. This is what we build um, all of our curriculum off of. So the student um, courses, this is what they will receive. So they have their own landing page and portal. So once um, you apply, we have all the student information, they will get a separate email from our team that uh, gives them their login and their portal credentials to get into the learning management system to take their courses. They take their courses, um, it's self-paced, it's on their own time. They will get a certificate, a nationally recognized certificate after each course um, that they complete. And you'll see it will cover the basic um, <laughs> technical food safety skills and some of the workplace essential uh, skills and um, they'll get one emotional intelligence uh, course content as well. So they get I am food, they'll get employee employer expectations, introduction to emotional intelligence, GMPs, um, they'll get a food safety culture course, sanitation, lockout, tagout, workplace industrial safety, all those good course um, topics that they would need to be well equipped to uh, work in the facility. And on the employer side as well, we want to be able to provide our supervisors um, with some courses um, as well that can help deal with uh, communications on the floor, interpersonal relationships, empathy, um, building team resilience, and uh, some coaching um, tips and tricks as well. So each of you have your own portal and gateways um, that you will receive uh, to take your course and your content. Um, <clears throat> Jen, I just wanted, I just saw another question come in that I wanted to address. A couple of people have mentioned that our website says international students are not eligible. Uh, this information about a student being eligible to work in Canada um, allows them to be a part of the program or allows the employer to submit an application. This is new information that just um, came to us. So an international student who um, can provide proof that they are able to work in Canada, we can accept them. Mm -hmm. um, just we'll wanted up. to touch base on that. Perfect. We'll update that on the website that we just got. Yes, we will. In about a month or so ago. So it will yeah. be updated. And then trainings are only available for hired students. Yes, that's correct. It's a part of um, <laughs> the program that we're offering. Yes, for students and also for the employers. Yeah. We do have the, the curriculum for employers as well. Any more questions or live questions? Um, we did have another come in and I know we've already touched on it a little bit, but uh, someone asked, when do you think you will know about the funding for summer 2022? <laughs> we were hoping that we'll get some news before Christmas. That would be a great Christmas gift, um, but it's, going to be fairly soon, if not very early uh, in the new year, if we don't hear at the end of this yeah. year. Um, also, again, our website is swpp-fpsc.com. Do you feel it will be propelterism and culinary as well for international students? Um, the culinary restaurants, um, they typically fall underneath the tourism industry. Um, there is the tourism, tourism industry does have a student workplace uh, subsidy program as well. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't fall under the food and manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. You'll have to 
do with tourism HR council on on that one there. And yes. hopefully, hopefully they can as well or will agree. Yeah. Me, so the announcement for summer 2022 will be made as soon as we know. <laughs> and yes, it will be on the website and we do have a list of the participants. We can send out a uh, or it will be in the F FPSC newsletter as well. We will announce it as soon as we find out. And then there's a question from Adrian uh, to clarify again, um, if a student completes a work term with an employer and they receive their co-op work permit, can this employer then backdate to work term to get SWIFT? Yes. The key is they have their work permit. That's the main key to that statement. <clears throat> Yes, the co-op the co must be part of the term that they have been hired for. So they cannot complete a term, let's say for the fall term they worked for you, and then they got a winter co-op, you must reapply for the winter term and their co-op needs to coincide with that. Uh, just to confirm, students live in Ontario and employers in Quebec. Employer can still apply for funding, correct? Yes. Absolutely. Correct. Yes. This is a national program. All provinces and territories are eligible to apply. Perfect. So just a few other um, programs that um, FPSC has at the moment that you may um, be interested in is this one is our employer stream program. So if you would like to um, train or upskill some of your current staff um, already working in your facility, um, we can provide you with customized uh, training. You'll get your own um, company campus um, landing page and portal um, with a whole suite of curriculum um, that your employees can participate in and take. And it's at no cost to you. This program's running for about one more year. Um, we have about, I think, five to six spaces left for um, a few other employers to join the program um, from across Canada. It is a robust program. It's really awesome. We also provide you with free Chromebooks um, to set up um, those learnings for your employees and that they can also take after hours um, in downtime and no downtime to the company. Um, a lot of groups and employees are taking the courses um, on their own time uh, after work. So it's a great program. So if you're interested in that, um, just let us know. It's a succeedingatwork.ca. The program is called Succeeding at Work Employer Stream. And Deanna Zinger is our project manager for that program if you're interested. Um, for those of you in Atlantic Canada, we also have a program called Skills Training Atlantic Canada, um, where we have um, curriculum content available uh, to your companies uh, for your new hires, your frontline workers, and your supervisors. Um, right now, we have about 400 supervisors enrolled in this program um, with over 40 companies who are participating um, in Atlantic Canada. Again, the program's at no cost, um, funded um, by the Future Skills Center. We're actually aligning to that framework and testing out the models uh, of the content and the curriculum of that framework. It's a great program as well. We're offering you Chromebooks and so forth to get um, your employees up and going, but the feedback has been um, amazing. And we're really seeing a lot of great growth and development amongst uh, on the production floor and amongst employees. There's a cool piece of this program called the ACACOS program, um, which means Guiding Star in Cree, where we actually have webinars. It's all based on the emotional intelligence series and content um, for your supervisors. Um, so they get one-on-one -on -one or coaching, group coaching that goes along with that series of learning. So great program. The project manager for that is Deborah McCowan. And um, you can go on our website and I think it's stack-fpsc.com for that uh, website. Uh, we have a new cool program that we call iFood360 and we are developing virtual reality training uh, for 
employees and also for those um, students and those looking to come into the industry who may be unemployed. So we're doing a career exploration model um, where we're actually going to be able to see what it's like to work in uh, various sectors within um, food processing or food manufacturing industry. Um, as well, we're going to have the technical training side um, for the workers. So they're going to be able to take some course content. They're actually going to be able to apply that in VR and virtual reality. Um, really cool program. Um, we're hoping to launch that probably for June of next year. We're starting um, filming soon at many locations for the career exploration uh, component of that. Um, you'll see there'll be a workshop or webinar set up for that as well very shortly. Mike is a part of that team and the project manager is Mark McCowan uh, for that program. Uh, website will be up and ready shortly, but if you're interested in that, please let us know as well. Every company also will receive the Oculus headsets um, as part of this project. You'll be given them, you get to keep them um, and okay. use them. Uh, for your employees and so forth on site. And you also will have um, available Chromebooks to those who need them as well. And then the last one, I think it's the last one I want to let you know about is our Succeeding at Work language stream. So this is where, this is only available to Ontario uh, companies at this time, uh, unfortunately, but it will be rolled out to the rest of the country shortly after where we're offering 10 of our courses in seven, well, six different languages. It's seven if you include English um, at no cost to you. Um, it's going to be online and available to your employees. We have so many, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have the highest number of uh, immigrant workers uh, in Canada industry. We even have some who don't speak English at all um, and so forth. We will be able to provide education to everybody on the production floor. So the first set of languages that we are translating are French, Chinese, Punjabi, Spanish, Russian, and Tagalog. Um, so that is going to be starting in February. Uh, we will be having another uh, webinar session on that specifically. Um, we can, we're going to be training up to 300 individuals um, who are already working within the sector within Ontario in those various languages. Um, and then Chromebooks will be available to those as well um, who want to take that uh, training, but 10 courses in these various languages. That's coming up soon. And then as well, we do have a membership. If you're not a part of our organization, we'd love to have you on board and partner with us. If you're interested, you can go to um, our membership section of the FPSC website. And again, any questions, um, contact the project team. Um, any individuals you see here, we can answer your questions. We will get back to you. We look forward to receiving all of your applications. Apply um, as soon as you can. We want to get the money and the funds out to you um, as soon as possible. Spread the word if you are a part of an industry association group, you have other co-workers working in the industry, so forth, please um, share uh, the word around to those uh, who you know. And if there's any other questions, we will answer those. And we just want to thank you uh, for attending on behalf of the SWIP team here. Jen, thank you for helping to present. And Tiffany and Cindy and Mike, uh, great job. And thank you so much. Let's see if we have any more questions. I think we do. I think we had a few more come in. Um, just to confirm, do we apply for funding after we have secured a, st a student? Um, you don't have to have already hired your student. You can complete the application if you have not hired the student. Uh, we will send you your terms and conditions to sign and then all you need to do is notify us when you hired your student and then we will reach out to them and request their required documents and you will be good to go. It is easier if you do have everything. Yes. <laughs> initially, but you can again use the system to host a job to any of the university college programs through Campus Connect or connect with your local college and university directly to their co-op program. Um, most of them know about um, the student work placement 
program funding, um, but you can connect with them directly. They all have co-op programs and can probably um, really get the word out uh, for you quickly. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, nothing live, we'll end the session there. And yes, we will provide you uh, with the recording um, of the presentation and the uh, PowerPoint information. Yes. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And we're eight thank minutes you. over time, but thanks for sticking around. Yes, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.